Hello and welcome back to part three of our undercoating segment. In this video we're going to take a close-up look at the preparation needed to get your car ready for undercoating. Also uh, probably going to need to do some preparation in the area that you're working in. As you can see I've got my booth mask off with quite a bit of plastic uh, paper down on the floor. I'm going to be crawling around this thing on my hands and knees with that Schutz gun and uh, it's going to be flying everywhere uh, coming in and out of the fenders uh, no telling where it's going to land. So we just want to make sure everything in the booth is protected um, while we're getting around the car. And so some of this I'm going to do in this position and then uh, let it dry up for a couple days and after after it sets up hard enough then we're going to put the rotisserie back on it and roll it over and get underneath. So I can get through most of it in this position. I just can't get to the pan. So I can get in here and get up underneath the dashboard and try and get in there and get all that area. And uh, here's a, a sampling of what it's going to look like. So I did this a few days ago, and uh, we got a clear coat on there. And that's a 75-25 blend with our 2060 and our 2021 to get that sheen. So kind of an eggshell type finish on there. I think that'll look real nice when we're all done. And then also I just painted the VIN numbers in uh, a real nice black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape those off. Uh, shoot my undercoating on everything around it and then uh, peel the tape when I get ready to do my clear coat and uh, that should bring those up real nice. Okay, let's take a look at some of the taping that's going on here. So I've got uh, vinyl tape uh, on everything that is finished paint up against our uh, textured edge. And the reason I'm using the vinyl paint is it really does, uh, vinyl tape rather, uh, it does peel better than some of the other tapes and should give us a nice edge. Even though uh, peeling that undercoating um, is not as clean as peeling just uh, paint to paint. There's going to be a little bit of an edge on there. And then also uh, around the entire perimeter of the car I put on kind of a like a uh, blast shield so I'm not getting a uh, tumble under to the bottom side of the car. I can just shoot directly onto my piece and uh, not have anything going where I don't want it. So I'm going to shoot down the, the bottom side here. I've got the uh, the paintwork masked off as tight as I can get it. Which should give us a nice edge on there. Also it's going to be a little bit dark up in these fenders. Even though I've got light in the booth, when I get up inside here with the gun and shooting all that black around, it'll be real tough to see. So uh, I'm going to run out and get some kind of LED lighting and see if I can't strap that on my wrist and uh, have some light in there while I'm getting through some of these darker areas. And we're going to shoot down underneath here, um, right up to the bottom side. All this will be uh, very doable from any angle and shouldn't be any problem uh, shooting it on the dolly here. And then up inside the engine compartment, I'll be able to get everything in here. Also, my friend Paul, who's doing the Tiger Project, uh, he's offered to help out uh, in the morning. He's going to come over and uh, help out with some of the camera work. So while I'm crawling around on my hands and knees, he's going to try and get this camera in there and uh, just show you what's going on with the pattern and the different angles I'm going to be using to get it on there. So we're almost ready to go here. A little bit more prep work to do in the booth. And then we're uh, ready for action. Let's take a look at our product. Here's our Rust-Oleum. This is what I'm going to be using. Um, get a look down in there. Here it is, nice and gooey. Uh, sprayed up real nice so far. I've shot all the bumpers, uh, some of the smaller pieces, did our clear coat, and uh, even did a scratch test on our, uh, on our small pieces just to make sure it's not going to delaminate. And, um, yeah, real tough. I mean, it, it stuck right on there. And this, this epoxy has been on here. Uh, some of this has been on here for six months. Some of it's been on here for at least a year. So uh, the, what I want to do with the scuffing is I want to just take that, that hard shell, almost like a skin on there. I want to just break it down so that we at least get a good mechanical bond. And then I've wiped this down with a reducer. And reducer is something that I do. Um, not necessarily in any rule books. It's a little bit hotter than um, than the uh, painting prep. 
And the reason I'm using a reducer on the epoxy is because it just it just uh, uh, etches it just a little bit. Um, I wouldn't recommend you doing this unless you've done your research on the exact reducer or chemicals you're going to use to do any kind of a prep work on it. Um, some of these reducers now, uh, depending on where you live, here's the reducers that I'm using. Uh, I'm in Nevada, and so we have different uh, VOC compliances than other states and also uh, other parts of the world. And some of the reducers now, some of the lacquer thinners, uh, some of these solvents, they do have oils in them, and if you get something that, that puts down an oil, you could have a problem with things sticking. So um, I'm doing this. It works for me uh, doing it under these conditions with these with these products, but uh, wouldn't guarantee that it would work for you. So always a good idea to do a test sample before you try something out. I've already done the bumpers with that uh, reducer, and uh, no problem with it sticking. Scratched them up. And a lot of the reason I'm scratching it up is just the overspray from uh, so many painting processes since I put this on here. But I think we shouldn't have any problem with it sticking. And then uh, when I fill my gun, I've got a tape, piece of tape on here. And so what we want to do, we don't want to really fill the gun up because you could run into problems while it's spraying out. So right here is our siphon tube, and this needs to breathe. This takes the pressure out of the gun as a uh, as the material is, is uh, draining down. And if we get the uh, material in this, then it'll stop spraying. So if you're tipping the gun sideways this way and you, you take a drink of material, it'll plug that. So you can lean the gun this way, but you can't lean it this way. So I gotta be careful uh, when I've got a full cup how much leaning I can do on the gun. Okay guys, let me finish uh, preparing the shop here, get things ready for the morning. And uh, Paul will be here, and we'll get some get some footage going. Hey guys, back in the booth here this morning, so we're getting ready to get started. This is Paul. He's going to help us out with our video. Say hi, Paul. Hello, everyone. And so, also, what we've done, we've uh, scratched up our base coat, covered it up with our vinyl tape, and then also we got our LED light set up on our gun here. Almost looks like we're going into battle. So done a dry run with that and it looks like it's going to work out. So let's get this thing going and see how it turns out. Okay, got through our first coat, uh, relatively simple. Took two hours to get through everything. You can see now I've got some paper blocking off the glare coming in from the side of the booth here. So what's happening is I'm getting up under the dashboard and on this side of the car, finding it very difficult to see with that glare. 
you know, black on black, uh, real tough to spray out. However, the flashlight is working excellent. I, I think without that, it'd be very tough to do this job. So yeah, I really recommend a nice bright LED to strap on your, your tool. Take a look around the backside. Our uh, filter completely plugged up. Hardly, hardly can breathe through that at all. Let's get a new filter going there. But, uh, first coat drying up nice. And uh, second coat uh, shouldn't be as bad because I'm not trying to drive it back in the corners and get uh, absolutely everything that's going on there. What I'm trying to do is just smooth out the texture and make it look even with our second coat. Anything I've missed, just to give it a nice uniform look. Okay, well, let's get the gear back on and get the second coat going. Okay, it's been about 24 hours since we sprayed out our last coat. Um, dried up overnight, and what I've done this morning is I've scuff sanded our VIN numbers and then did kind of a reverse masking on the outside perimeter and reshot one more coat of base on top of that. This so our clear coat sticks really well to it. And then also a close up look at our grain pattern. And you can see we're gonna maintain all our uh, spot well definitions and body lines. I think that's gonna come out real nice. Um, and then also I've made some modifications to our gun. So what I've done is I've put a flashlight on here, taped it up real good. It's going to allow me to get underneath the dashboard and in the fenders and up in some of those really tight areas. It's so hard to see in there. I wear glasses, so there's a lot of glare going on when I'm trying to spray this out. Um, but black on black anyways, uh, very difficult to see the blacker it gets. Now, I could bring uh, halogen lights in here and really light it up in here, but it, it is quite dangerous with the heat and the, the vapors. So um, LED is safest. It seems like it's going to be fine on the gun. We'll try that. And then also uh, I switched to the uh, gun that, or the cap that comes with the gun. And the reason I've done that, it has a, a steel screw-in type uh, base, which is a little bit more hardy. So when I'm banging around inside the fenders, if I accidentally hit it, it doesn't uh, knock it off of there. And also it has a directional vent. I can turn that. Um, gives me ability to lean the gun sideways or go upside down with it and not be dribbling clear coat all over our work. Okay, let me get this thing hooked up and get some clear coat going. Okay guys, it's been about 15 minutes since my second coat of clear. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting at the uh, back of the car. That's where I started spraying first and working towards the front where I ended up and it's really a good idea to try and pull your vinyl tape while the material is still soft because you've got the hard you've got the hard undercoating underneath it and uh, you've got some clear on top you can see a little bit there see how rough that is you can rub that down while it's soft and get rid of it the problem is if it dries too long um, then it's going to be really hard to pull your tape off of there and you could end up with some damage because uh, we're still dealing with fresh paint on the car. This has only been painted about a month. Um, you got fresh paint uh, making that transition right on the edge. Edges and holes are always the most vulnerable. So depending on how long the tape's been on there, uh, how hot it is, the hotter it is, the more sensitive it's going to be. Um, good idea just to get it off there and go real slow. I'm going about as slow as a snail. So when I'm pulling this tape, I'm pulling it towards the direction of the edge pressure-wise and back on itself about that slow and if there's any little fuzzy bits I just rub them down and it'll uh, it'll smooth out real nice and then uh, under this area right here I've got vinyl tape kind of wrapped under that painted edge so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this razor blade at an angle and gently ride it along that edge first and break away any kind of a bridge that might be there uh, with material built up. You want to cut that bridge first, otherwise you could end up pulling some chunks of material off of there, especially if you wait uh, longer than one day to pull your masking. So give it 15 minutes and uh, just pull real gentle and you should be in good shape. Okay, let me get the tape pulled off of here, see what she looks like. 
I just want to take a quick look on the inside here and show you what's going on. So I thought I had absolutely everything blocked off in here 100% and uh, apparently not. So I'm getting some, uh, like a fog that was drifting in here with my clear coat. That clear coat just travels and gets on everything everywhere. So it got inside somehow when I was spraying and uh, now it's kind of stuck on everything. Got a little bit of a tacky film going. So what I'm going to do while we're still fresh and while we're still soft, I'm going to take a cotton rag and some paint thinner and uh, just wipe her down. That'll get rid of that film. If we let this set up too long, we won't be able to get it off. I'd actually have to reshoot the dash. So I'm going to peel this off of here and uh, clean it up real good with a cotton rag and some paint thinner. We should be back in business. Okay, guys, got it rolled out here in the sunshine. Got through our overspray drama. Uh, so what I did is take a... Uh, clean cotton rag and uh, some paint thinner and wipe down everything on the interior get it off the dashboard all the nooks and crannies and then went over the whole car anyways uh, it had seemed to have drifted in spots you wouldn't have thought it would have gotten into but uh, if you get it in the first hour you can get it out of there no problem even down the door jams seem to have a little bit in there but we got it out and uh, that worked pretty good for that and then followed it up with a uh, clean cotton rag with a water squirt bottle and uh, water to get off any residue that the um, paint thinner might have left on there because it, it is a mild solvent but it still could have a reaction with the other solvents that are still curing out on our paints below. The texture, the texture really came out nice. Very very happy with that and also we still were able to maintain uh, all our body definitions and um, spot welts. Also, this is uh, one of the details on this car that I just really love. The way they had taken the body and brought it into the pan. It's a real beautiful job of manufacturing that. It paints up real nice too. Take a look at our fender wells inside. Now it's still a little bright out here for this. But better idea to see what it looks like out in the sunshine than in those LED lights inside. Okay guys, I'm going to go inside, tune up that booth, get the floor paper pulled up because I want the rotisserie sitting uh, firmly planted on cement. We'll get that all set up, get it rolled back in there, and finish the bottom side. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.